and you fall asleep with your conscience gnawing away at your throat, I thank the good Lord for conscience. It's what makes the days of your best far, far outnumber the days of your worst. You're my namesake, Jack. And I bust with pride for it. We should go for all the marbles in 1960. What do you think? Uh, I'll only be 43 years old in 1960. So what? Hmm. American people like their presidents aged and venerable. There still is a sense of confidence, not always justified, that I wouldn't vote for anyone 43 years old for president. Oh, yes, you will. Uh, too much turkey. You never discuss politics on a full stomach. Forget about your age, Jack. When the chips are down, it won't matter. I was supposed to be too young to be a bank president. You were supposed to be too young to be a senator. Well, I was a bank president, and you're a senator. Besides, you'd probably be running against Nixon. After eight years at the right hand of Eisenhower, he's practically a shoe-in for the nomination, and Nixon's only five years older than you. Not nearly as handsome. That's no joke. Can count. Incidentally, you need a hacker. Listen to me. Three months ago, you came within 33 and a half votes of the vice presidential nomination. You won a lot of hearts in this country, kiddo. I assume you found the time to take a glance at polls, which cost me a fortune to run. Maybe it's just as well you lost to keep off. You'd have gone down with Stevenson under Ike's landslide. There might have been some taint on you. This way, you're still the classy-looking whiz kid who came out of nowhere and almost beat the big boys. That's worth its weight in gold. Yours, I presume. Knock, knock. Uh, who's there? November. November who? November when we used to tell knock-knock jokes. Wise guy. I assume this isn't a private conversation. It hasn't been a private conversation this family in 40 years. What about support? We couldn't get support of the party leadership. For what? The White House. Are you just kicking it around, or is this serious? This is serious. 1960. The cornfield said to the farmer, I'm all he is. We've never counted on the party leadership before. We built our own organization in 46, we made it better in 52, and with four more years of hard work, and I mean hard, there'd be no stop. 
He'll only be, uh, what, 43 years old in 60? You've already covered that. I came in late. And makeup. I'm going to look 67 years old. We falsify my birth certificate. There's always a way. Okay. Suppose we have to get to it sooner or later. A $64,000 question. All right. I have to admit, at this moment, I wouldn't mind being an Episcopalian. Maybe we could just not mention it. I can't give you any real arguments. It's a crapshoot, no question about it. I just have a feeling. I think our time has come. What do you think? If not us, who? If not now, when? When do we start? Take a break. another factor in the campaign, the Catholic religion of Senator Kennedy. Now, from the beginning, Nixon and Kennedy have refused to permit this to become an issue between them. Yet, despite their pleas, it has become an issue in the country. As far as I'm concerned, I will decline to, to discuss religion and will discuss other issues in order to keep the minds of the people on the issues that should decide this election. Vice President Nixon and Senator Kennedy have used new means of communication to pioneer a new type of political debate. Vice President Nixon and Senator Kennedy met tonight in the first of the great debates. The judgment of the American people regarding these encounters may well decide the outcome of the election. He's got high hopes. 1960 is the year for his hopes. Good evening. This is NBC News Election Central. For several million of us Americans, this is the most extraordinary election. By circumstances which must be obvious, I hereby speak for all those Americans who have adjusted to the immutable fact that come what may tonight, we shall be older than the President of the United States. We're trying to settle here so far without any success, or without enough success, the closest, one of the closest elections in the history of the United States. Vice President Nixon has been whittling away at it. Here come some changes. Let's see what this reveals. Some of these southern states that they said, or border states at any rate, that they said would be very close in this election are proving to be very close. At 7.19 a.m. Eastern Time, Senator Kennedy was elected President of the United States.